Well, welcome everyone to the 23rd edition of the Canadian Taxpayer Federation Teddy Waste Awards. I'm Aaron Woodrick, the CTF's Federal Director, and I'm pleased to be your host for this virtual pandemic edition of our annual awards. Now, it's been a tough year for just about everyone, but we hope that this year's Teddies, which celebrate the best of the worst of government waste, can give everyone something to laugh about. After all, these are still your tax dollars. If they're not going to be spent properly, at the very least, you should be able to get some comic relief out of them. This year we have 15 nominees across our three categories, plus our most coveted award, the Lifetime Achievement Award. Starting this year with the Municipal category. The first nominee involves a dubious shopping spree. Vancouver City Council managed to blow more than $316,000 on designer office furniture, including Herman Miller office chairs that cost $1,500 a piece. At the same time, Mayor Kennedy Stewart publicly complained that the city was facing a COVID-related cash crunch. Sorry, Vancouver residents, municipal services may have to face the axe as the top priority appears to be keeping the city's many bureaucratic derrieres exquisitely cushioned. The second nomination might be one of the flakiest examples we've ever heard about a gross misuse of tax dollars. The Montreal Bureau of Rosemont spent $63,000 on snowmaking equipment this winter, which a spokesperson insisted was essential because other parts of the province were getting snow and Rosemont wasn't. You might even call that reasoning a shameless snow job. For those who aren't familiar with Montreal's climate, the city receives about two meters of snow every winter, at no cost to taxpayers. The third nominee is an expensive lesson in getting nothing for something. The City of Toronto likes to try on big infrastructure projects like their yoga pants, but if they don't fit, taxpayers get hit with the bill. The city spent $160,000 to build four kilometers of bike lanes on Brimley Road in July last year as part of the city's pandemic response. Unfortunately, the city decided to tear them out just five months later, costing taxpayers another $80,000, meaning taxpayers wasted a quarter million dollars, equal to the property tax bill of 80 Toronto households, with nothing to show for it. The fourth nominee is worthy of the Teddy's namesake, Ted Wetherill, a former federal bureaucrat who spent thousands on food and drink before finally losing his job. Calgary City Councillor Joe Magliocca got caught billing taxpayers hundreds of dollars for steaks, wine and martinis while on an official visit to Quebec City. An investigation by Post Media found 10 people listed on Magliocca's receipts who said they never sat down with him, suggesting that he has some very hungry imaginary friends. But the story doesn't end there. Calgary's Integrity Commissioner had to step down from his investigation of the issue because Magliocca also expensed a $163 lunch with the Commissioner. Ultimately, a forensic audit into the debacle cost taxpayers $64,000, while a second report concluded that more than half of the reimbursements Magliocca had received since 2017 should not have been reimbursed. And the fifth nominee is truly a lesson in political tone-deaf decisions. Regina City Council voted themselves a whopping 26% salary increase in the middle of a pandemic, even after they laid off 80% of the city's casual staff. Sadly, they're not alone. Kelowna, BC saw all of its city council get an automatic pay raise in January, while Mayor Francois Veilleux of Beauceville, Quebec, population 6,354, was set to receive a $25,000 pandemic bonus until public outcry caused City Council to cancel it. And this year's winner is the City of Toronto. The City of Toronto for its canceled bike lane. You know, we hear a lot about cancel culture these days, but it usually doesn't cost taxpayers a quarter million dollars. For some immediate reaction, let's go to our Ontario Director Jasmine Moulton. Jasmine, how are you feeling about Toronto taking home a golden pig for this scandalous waste of money? Erin, I wish I could say that I was really surprised by our <laughs> this announcement today, but Toronto really lo does love to waste money, so it's hardly surprising that we're the best of the worst. Now let's move on to our provincial nominees. The first nominee is for a wasteful idea that might have floated in the Roaring Twenties, but it's a pretty bad one for the Twenty Twenties. The government of Quebec spent $30 million to buy shares of a French startup firm, Flying Whales, which makes Zeppelins. Even worse, this wasn't the first time Flying Whales tried to bamboozle the Quebec government for taxpayers' cash, having previously failed because it neglected to address the fact that the water it uses as ballast to stabilize its airships has a habit of freezing during the harsh Quebec winter. Oh, the humanity. 
The second nominee has repeatedly left taxpayers all wet. The Quebec government bought the F.A. Gautier Ferry to move people across the St. Lawrence at a cost of $175 million. But the ship turned out to be a very expensive lemon and had to undergo repairs. So to keep the ferry service operating in the meantime, the STQ bought a used ship from Newfoundland for $2 million and proceeded to crash it. Twice within the first month of service. It was then written off as unseaworthy. Last, but certainly not least, the STQ bought a third ship and spent $45 million putting it into service. It too has twice hit a dock, not to mention Quebec taxpayers' pockets. The third nominee really shows that hypocrisy can pay. Former Ontario Hospital CEO Dr. Tom Stewart was fired after it became public that he traveled to the Dominican Republic over the Christmas holidays. Before being fired, Dr. Stewart sat on an advisory panel that guided Ontario's pandemic stay-at-home orders. It turned out that the hospital's board of directors had actually approved his vacation request and therefore had fired him without cause. He's now eligible to receive a taxpayer-funded severance package. The fourth nominee just shows how literally doing nothing can still cost taxpayers a bundle. Once again, the Nova Scotia Department of Transportation is nominated for its idled Yarmouth Ferry. Since being relaunched in 2014, taxpayers have sunk millions into this unprofitable ferry service. Nova Scotia taxpayers have even paid for terminal upgrades and the salaries of custom agents in the United States. The ferry hasn't actually sailed since 2018, but that hasn't stopped it from racking up $34 million in expenses in the last two years. It was announced last January that the ferry wouldn't set sail before 2022 at the earliest. And the final provincial nominee is no stranger to the Teddies. The regional transit operator for Metro Vancouver, TransLink, made headlines when they announced agency executives would be taking a 10% pay cut last spring. This cut was pretty significant considering the agency CEO earns more than $448,000, or about as much as New York City's transit boss. Freedom of information requests obtained by the Canadian Taxpayers Federation revealed that TransLink executives used emergency COVID funding from both the federal and provincial governments to quietly reverse the pay cuts they had announced. The total cost to taxpayers of the cuts they never ended up taking? More than $200,000. And the winner of this year's Provincial Teddy, it's the Société des Traversiers du Québec, the agency that never met a ship it couldn't wreck. Let's go to our Quebec director, Renaud Brassard, for some immediate reaction. Oh my God, I can't believe it. Thank you so much. You know, it just goes to show that when you persevere and do the same thing over and over again, like ramming into a dock repeatedly, you can achieve outstanding levels of government waste. Thank you so much for this award. And finally, the federal category. The first nominee is a story about doing as I say, and not as I do. Federal Health Minister Patty Haidu has repeatedly implored Canadians to avoid non-essential travel, despite herself taking multiple weekend trips home on government aircraft to Thunder Bay during travel ban periods. This cost taxpayers over $73,000. Her trips included traveling over Easter and Victoria Day holidays, despite her ministry advising against travel and social gatherings during those times. The minister claimed she had pressing constituency business back in her Thunder Bay riding that necessitated her travel, yet public gatherings were banned at the time. The second nominee represents waste on a global scale. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's campaign to win Canada a seat on the UN Security Council was an expensive failure. The campaign to impress global leaders and UN bureaucrats cost $2.3 million in taxpayers' money. Spending included more than $24,000 for such things as candles, keychains, and lollipops. For all that effort, Canada still lost out to Norway and Ireland for the seat, showing that when Trudeau once declared, Canada's back, he apparently didn't mean on the Security Council. The third nominee also shows our government's waste doesn't stop here at home. Global Affairs, Canada's Mission Cultural Fund, spends nearly two million annually for such absurdities as flying chefs around the world to cook at Canadian embassies, $52,000 for rock star Brian Adams to show off his photo exhibition in Toronto, and $8,800 for a racy art show in Hamburg, Germany entitled 
Whose Jizz Is This? Featuring an eclectic cast of giant sex toys called Fleshies. The fourth nominee is truly out of this world. Former Governor General Julie Payette's turbulent tenure at Rideau Hall was apparently less than friendly to her staff. And taxpayers didn't fare much better. Payette spent more than $650,000 on her swearing-in ceremony and another half million on renovations at the Governor General's residence, but never actually moved in. While the investigation into her dubious management style cost taxpayers another $393,000. But even though Payette has blasted off as former GG, she's still allowed to bill taxpayers up to $200,000 a year for office expenses thanks to the government's ludicrous lifetime expense policy. Ground control to the Prime Minister, time to abort expense accounts once a Governor General blasts off. The fifth and final nominees show that sometimes there's no trough a hungry hog won't happily get its snout into. The federal liberals, conservatives, new democrats and greens all took advantage of the federal emergency wage subsidy program intended to help struggling businesses keep staff employed during pandemic shutdowns. They did this in spite of the fact that political parties already receive multiple forms of hefty taxpayer subsidies such as the federal political tax credit that has cost taxpayers around $145 million since 2016. The Conservatives have said they're now paying it back, while the Liberals have said they've stopped taking it. As for provincial parties? As of today, the only governing provincial party in the country that has confirmed it's bilking taxpayers with this program is the United Conservative Party in Alberta. And the winner of this year's federal teddy you know, I almost want to scream, but I'm told no one can hear you scream in space. It's former Governor General Julie Payette. Let's get some immediate reaction from our in-house royal specialist, our British Columbia director, Chris Sims. Oh my, how fascinating. Yes, Ms. Payette, unfortunately, you deserve this award because blowing through hundreds of thousands of taxpayer dollars in such a short amount of time is definitely waste on a grand scale. And now, our most prestigious award, the Lifetime Achievement Award for Waste. Past recipients have included everyone from premiers and prime ministers to Bev Oda and Bombardier. This year's winner is a hapless federal project that many of our nation's capital are intimately familiar with, spanning 12 years, two governments, and more than $2 billion in wasted taxpayer dollars. This year's winner of the Lifetime Achievement Award is... Public Services and Procurement Canada for the Phoenix Payroll Fiasco. What started as a plan by Stephen Harper's Conservatives to save taxpayers money ended up doing quite the opposite. Phoenix's cost overruns and delays saw thousands of federal bureaucrats not getting paid properly for years, or in some cases, paid far too much. The Trudeau Liberals also deserve part of the blame after they ignored repeated warnings that the system was not ready and decided to launch it anyway. But even though Phoenix has finally been fixed at a cost of $2.6 billion to taxpayers, one last news story has risen from the ashes to stiff taxpayers. Earlier this year, it was revealed that bonus payments totaling $1.7 million and dating as far back as the system's launch in 2016 were paid to senior bureaucrats responsible for the program's implementation. Bonuses for wasting taxpayer money? Truly a phenomenon that could only ever happen in government. That's our show for this year. Thank you for joining us for the 2021 Teddy Waste Awards, and we'll see you again in 2022.